In this video, I'm going to show you the different ways of installing a domain controller. But before that, I just want you to know that you must install Active Directory first before you install a domain controller. And because we've already done that in the previous video, I will now show you how to install a domain controller in full UI, in core using PowerShell, and install using a media. First, I'll show you the steps on how to install using the full UI. Now, we've already done this in the previous video, but for the sake of you guys who didn't watch the previous video, here's how you do it. Assuming that you're done installing Active Directory Domain Services, go to your server manager and click on ADDS. After that, you're going to be prompted to configure the Active Directory Domain Services. You should click on More, and then click on Promote this server to a domain controller. And then the ADDS configuration wizard will pop up. There you will be given three choices. Add a domain controller to an existing domain. This is if you already have an existing domain in another Windows version. And then there's add a new domain to an existing forest. You can use this if you already have an existing parent domain. And you want to create a child domain. And lastly, the add a new forest. This is if you are creating your first domain. In this case, I'm just going to choose add a new forest. After that, you're going to need to provide the name for your root domain. Then click next. And here you're going to need to provide a directory service restore mode password or DSRM. This password will be used whenever you encounter a problem within your active directory. After that, click next. In the next wizard, you can just ignore the prompt for the DNS delegation because in this case, the one we are configuring right now is the parent zone. After that, the system will provide a default NetBIOS or Network Basic Input Output domain system. This domain name matches the DNS domain name. You should remember that you can only change this during the creation of the root domain. Then click Next. In the next wizard, you may or may not encounter some warnings, but you need not to worry if it's just a yellow warning. You can just continue with the installation. But if you encounter a red warning, then there is a certain prerequisite that needs to be fixed. After that, click on Rerun Prerequisites, check. It can be found in the upper part of the wizard, and then click Install. Next, I'll show you how to install a domain controller in Core using PowerShell. The first thing you need to do is to enter PowerShell, because we're going to need to execute these commands in PowerShell, and not in CMD. Now, in order to install Active Directory Domain Services, type install hyphen Windows Feature space hyphen name, add domain services, and press enter. Once it's done, you'll be warned about the automatic updates, but you need not to worry because you've already installed what you need. The thing we'll need to do then is to install an Active Directory for us. Just type install add forest hyphen domain name. You're going to need to type in the domain name and hit enter. After that, you're going to need to enter the safe mode administrator password to confirm it. And then the system will ask if you want to continue with this operation. You can just put A for yes to all. That's the easiest way to go for it. Once it's done, it will reboot and now you have a domain controller. Then you can add other domain controllers. Because seldom, if not ever, do you have only a single domain controller in a production environment. And if you have only one and it goes down, then nobody can log on and there's no authentication that can take place. Now, if you want to install your Active Directory domain controller from a form of media, for example, a flash drive or external hard drive, I'll show you what you need to do. Again, you still need to install Active Directory first before installing the domain controllers. But before we go on, what are the advantages of installing from a media? One, there is no initial network needed. The purpose of this IFM is to avoid network traffic and initially we don't need to have a network connection. We use this to avoid a large one transfer. What we're going to do is to copy the data from one server to the media maybe an external drive or a, flash or a flash drive, then copy it to the other server, thereby eliminating the need for a one link to transfer files from one server to another. This will be very helpful if you need to transfer large volumes of data while having a very slow one link transfer rate. Another advantage is that while installing the domain controller, only differences are synced, thereby avoiding replication of data. 
And then there's the NTDS util parameters, which are the commands we'll use for this. So instead of PowerShell, we're going to use administrative command prompt to execute these commands. And there are four different options for this. One, create full or full read and write domain controller once it is already transferred to another domain controller via media. Two, there's the RODC, read-only domain controller. That means that the other domain controller won't have any right to write to the Active Directory data. The third one is the create sysvol full. Sysvol is a special directory in the file systems that contains important Active Directory items as well as critical types like necessary to make sure that Active Directory is working properly. And then the last one is sysvol rodec. The only disadvantage though is that you can only copy the Active Directory via media when you have the same operating system. For example, if you have a Windows Server 2012 and you copied it into a Windows Server 2008, well, it won't work. So to do this, you need to run command prompt as an administrator, again, and enter ntdsutil which is the utility for Active Directory services. And then you need to enter activate instance NTDS, then IFM, then use create sysvol full, and then the path where you want to store the data. So now it's ready for installation. So all you have to do now is insert the media to your server and promote the server to a domain controller. And because you already have an existing domain, you can just choose Add Domain Controller to an existing domain. Fill out the necessary data and then install. Another way to install domain controllers is through scripts in Command Prompt. I have prepared a script right here, which I've put in a folder named Files in Drive C, which I named Add DCPS1 because this is a PowerShell script. To run this script, we need to run PowerShell first and then allow the execution of the script. First let us see if it is allowed or not. Enter execution policy and if the result is restricted you can set it to unrestricted by entering set execution policy unrestricted. Now you can launch the script by entering the path and because I'm already inside the directory where I put this script I could just enter period forward slash add dc.ps1 and then enter the username and password then the safe mode administrator password confirm it and wait for it to finish now how do you install an active directory here's how you do it you can go to manage choose remove roles and features click on next next again and then uncheck the directory domain services Click Remove Features, and once you click Next, it will prompt you to click on Demote this domain controller. You can check on the Force the Removal of this domain controller. Click on Next, and check the Proceed with the Removal. Click on Next, enter the password, confirm it, and then click on Next. Click on Demote, it will reboot, and then you're done with the uninstall. But if you want to do it in core, you're going to need to run CMD as an administrator and then type PowerShell, type uninstall, hyphen, add domain controller, and press enter. And then you're going to need to enter a local administrator password, confirm the uninstall, type A, which means yes to all, and then wait for the uninstall to finish. Now, if you want to upgrade from Windows Server 2008 to Windows Server 2012 and want to retain accounts in your Active Directory controller, you're going to need to do the following. You're going to need to run CMD as an administrator and run all the necessary preparations. First, enter add prep forward slash forest prep, then press enter. Note that you can just do this on one domain controller because it will just replicate all the schema changes to the other domain controllers in the organization. After that, we're going to need to execute add prep forward slash domain prep, and once it's done, you are now ready for upgrade. You may now insert your Windows Server 2012 DVD or ISO file, then run the installation. Then you can go online to check and install updates, then choose the server with a GUI, click on next, 
then agree to the license agreement choose upgrade after that click on next then after the reboot we can check on tools active directory users and computers check the insides of the domain and you can see that the user accounts computers and organizational units that pres that was present in windows server 2008 is now present in windows server 2012 now let's move on to global catalog a global catalog is a full copy of the host domain's objects and a partial read only of the other domains in the same forest. It provides simpler searches across domains. For example, I wanted to find the name Shane. You can just type SH and then you'll see Shane in the results without needing to contact the source domain controllers because it uses UPN authentication. It can also validate forest objects and have Universal Group Membership WFO. Also, if you have a single domain, there will be no extra data in your global catalog, which means there will be no burden. But if you have multiple domains, then the global catalog will contain objects from all the domains. This is how you make a domain controller a global catalog. First, you're going to need to go to Tools, then choose Active Directory Sites and Services, and from there, you can select to make one domain controller a global catalog or not. You can right click on the NTDS setting, then click on properties, and from there you can select global catalog. Now before we end our video, let me just discuss to you the four types of trust relations. The first one is the external trust. It is a domain located in a separate forest that is not joined by a forest's trust. The second one is the shortcut. It is used to improve the user logon times between two domains within Windows Server 2003. This is useful when two domains are separated by two or more child domain trees. The third one is called Realm. It is used to form a trust relationship between non-Windows domains and Windows domains. For example, a Realm relationship between Windows and a Linux domain. And lastly, the forest trust. This gives full transitivity between two forests and all its domains. And now we're done with Active Directory domain controller installations and trust relations. For more videos, check out this link right here.